Hi everyone, my name is Osama and I'm a dentist working in the UK. So one of you commented in my last video asking me to reflect on my year as working as a dentist. And then it got me thinking, whoa, I've been working as a dentist for one whole year. That's crazy, right? But then I thought, what advice would I give myself if I could go back? So this video, I'm going to give you all my top tips and tricks of dental foundation training and what I would do differently. So if you're not interested in dental related videos, just skip this video now. Okay, so the first point I'm going to speak about is anxiety. I remember the first couple of weeks sort of leading up to DFT and even starting, I was just there thinking, am I ready? Can I even do that procedure? Do I need to read up on how to do a root canal? And there's a sense of imposter syndrome. You feel like you're not totally ready. But I think an important point to keep in mind is help doesn't stop when you leave dental school. And the most important thing to do is take your mind off dentistry. So whilst you're there and you're in your sort of holiday period, just do stuff that makes you happy. Do all your hobbies, speak to all of your friends and just take your mind off dentistry. When you start your DFT program, just remember, you've got so much help. You've got your educational supervisor, you've got your other sort of FDs that you can speak to and you've even got a training program director who you can also go and speak to. So don't worry, help is there. Okay, I think another thing about anxiety is it sort of plays in your mind and then you start to worry. What happens if I make a mistake? Don't worry, we're all human. We all will make mistakes at some point. But the main thing is, it's knowing when to sort of acknowledge a mistake and knowing when to ask for help. So as part of your DFT program, it's like I said, you have so much help. You have an educational supervisor, you have an experienced nurse, and you have loads of different FDs that you can speak to. So if you do make a mistake, don't worry. Speak to your educational supervisor and have regular tutorials about how you can overcome that mistake so it doesn't happen again. So don't stress too much about making mistakes. There's this saying, the best learners are those who make the most mistakes but learn from those mistakes. So just remember, you do have a lot of help. Just try and speak to your educational supervisor, other FDs and learn from any little mistake that you might make. Okay, so my next piece of advice is, do all the things that you find hard. So you're probably there thinking, this guy is giving me some horrible advice. But honestly, you'll learn so much from doing all those little things that you find hard. So if you're there and you find molar root canals hard, indirect restorations hard, or even surgical procedures, just sit down with the educational supervisor, try and find patients that you think are suitable for those procedures, and just try and do them. So the way that I do it is, and the way that I try and track it is, I write down all the procedures that I do, and that way I've got a record of how many different procedures that I found hard initially and now that I feel comfortable with. So yeah, definitely try and do all those procedures that you find difficult. So back in dental school, we all have that dreaded portfolio. And when you graduate, you think, okay, I've finally gotten away from it. But no, you haven't. As a DFT trainee, you have a dental sort of e-portfolio where you need to track all the procedures that you do, all the tutorials that you do, any other sort of case-based discussions that you might have with your educational supervisor. So this is something that can become slightly overwhelming if you don't stay on top of it. Just because you have busy days, you come home and you don't feel like doing it. Best thing to do to stay on top of it is do a little bit over time. So every single day, if you have a tutorial or if you see an interesting patient or if you've done any treatment, just track it. Because doing it on the day takes a couple of minutes. So if you do a little bit over the time, by the time it gets to that deadline, you'll find that you've already done it. So. Honestly, with your portfolio, do a little bit over time. So the next question that I always get asked is, Summer, should I take clinical photos or should I not? Honestly, take as many as you can. And the reason for that is, one, you'll improve your sort of photography skills. But number two, by the end of the year, when you look back on all the photos that you've taken and all the different procedures that you've done, it is such a good learning tool. And you feel so good just because you think, whoa, I can't believe I've done all these things. So yeah, take as many photos as you can because you won't regret it. Finally, just enjoy the process. I think starting DFT is a lot like starting dental school. You start off and you're quite anxious and then over the course of the year you have good days, you have bad days, you feel happy and you feel sad. But honestly, by the end of the year you look back and it's one of those chapters of your life that you'll never forget. And I think the best way to think about it is life is a lot like a book and the next chapter of your life is always more interesting and always more fun. So if you're starting your DFT year, 
just try and look forward to it. Don't worry too much. And finally, if you have any questions or any concerns at all, just comment down below or message me on my Instagram and I'll try and reply to you all. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a comment, like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.